Hey guys, it's me again, Nova, the edgy karate guy, your Tekken buddy. So, being completely broken, offering your opponent no defensive option selects whatsoever against your offense, and being power crypt to oblivion through a frame data with unbelievable frames and properties doesn't really cut it, right? No. You still have to be bugged as the icing on the cake. Let's talk about the Power Crypt Abomination that is Tekken 8 Nina and report a massive bug that makes this Power Crypt Abomination even more insufferable and nearly unbeatable. Because as always, thanks Namco. It's up to a bona fide player base to point out the broken, unbalanced abominations you create. So here we go. The abomination starts at Nina down forward one and its follow up down forward one two. The most unbalanced mid poke in Tekken 8. Down forward one two is a jailing natural that deals 23 damage. This jailing natural can transition Nina into crouch dash by holding forward or transition into a built in sidestep by pressing up or down. These transitions happen to have insane frames on block, meaning the opponent has no proper defensive options to properly deal with it beyond the act of mere guessing. Usually, a balanced Tekken character cannot force mix-ups 50-50s and infinite turns on you by transitioning into a stance on block. When a balanced Tekken character transitions into you on block, you will always be able to check him. And of course, as modern Tekken is not a balanced Tekken experience and waifu characters are deliberately and intentionally unbalanced, that is not the case here. Your defensive options are completely restricted to the act of mere guessing. Let's delve deep into it so you can properly understand the nightmare. Can't move left. Can't move right safe on parry. By now, if you understand Tekken, you will realize, uh oh, we have a very serious problem here already. But that is just the tip of the iceberg. So I can't move left, I can't move right, and if I successfully parry it, she's still safe on parry. So what can I do then? I can do this. I can jab challenge her. By now you might be thinking, okay, all right, problem solved. If things are that simple, we have nothing to worry about, right? Right? Well, it would be a damn shame and so unfortunate if she had a collection of counter hit launchers to completely forbid you from challenging her with a jab challenge, right? It would be a shame if every single follow up from that string not only forbids you from trying any form of movement, but also counter hit launching you for devastating damage. I mean, it's not like a Tekken character would be allowed to have that, right? After all, Tekken is a balanced game, right? Modern Tekken is a completely balanced experience, right? Well, turns out it's not. It's really not. So, if I can't move, if I can't parry, and if I can't challenge due to the imminent risk of dying for a mere jab check, naturally the most reasonable and feasible option is to merely hold back to block crouch dash while standing 4. But what if I told you, after you block it, 
After all this bullshit and danger she puts you through, what if I told you it is still her turn? <laughs> yes, that's exactly what you heard. After all this bullshit, it is still Nina's turn. If you opt to take your turn here and try to interact with Nina, you can still die for it. I'm not joking. Allow me to show you in forensic detail. Because her wow standing for with variable follow-ups is completely unbalanced at only minus four on block, naturally, it gives Nina access to her monkey F1 plus two blonde bomb. Her 17 frames heat engaging power crush. Imagine unironically believing you get to have a turn after blocking all the bullshit Nina puts you through. But it goes even further than that. Because her blonde bomb is not a mere power crush, but actually a heat engaging power crush. No matter how clever you are on your check to make the monkey power crush user bleed, the Heat Engager will heal every damage you dealt her. <laughs> Meaning everything you did was in vain. And only you end up bleeding on this interaction. But not only bleeding, you are bleeding at fucking minus 17 and now having to deal with her with a full heat bar on you. With all her heat enhancements. This is beyond clown world. <laughs> but it is modern tech in a nutshell. Now, let's say you are aware of this reality, that she can pull the monkey power crush here. So you go for an ultra conservative check, like a mere downford one. Because you know their recovery is generous enough to the point you can block the blonde bomb in time. Then you'll realize that because she's only minus four on block, she can freely move around your ultra conservative downford one check. So, you can die for merely checking her. Because at these frames and at that range, free movement is on the menu. And the options you could use to stop her movement, of course, will be killed by Monkey F1 Plus 2 Heat Engaging Power Crush. So, as you can see, it is still her turn indeed, as I previously stated. Now, you got to see with your own eyes. But what if I told you being beyond broken doesn't really cut it? And that one of the reasons she's so broken and restricting your defensive options is because Tekken 8 Nina is literally bugged. Brace yourself, because what I'm about to show you is legit unbelievable. Remember I showed you, guys. I can't move, she's still safe on parry, and if I try to challenge her, I can die by a collection of counter-hit launchers. That we already know. But there's something wrong here. Because I'm not supposed to not be able to move. I'm supposed to be able to move to her weak side. Sidestep right. And the reason I can't is because Tekken 8 Nina is bugged. For whatever reason, whenever you as the player are designated to P1, if you are the player 1, no matter which side of the screen you currently are in the match. You will not be able to move Nina while standing for. But let's go to simple select, put myself on P2, and let's see what happens. You gotta love Namco, bro. I mean, what the fuck is even happening here? So, to put into perspective how broken and powered crit she became in Tekken 8, let's take a look at how her down forward 1 2 functioned in Tekken 7. In Tekken 7, she had a much bigger gap on the crouch dash. Meaning, if you wanted to challenge her while standing 4, you didn't have to resort to a meek jab challenge. You could magic 4 her to even the odds. Also, she didn't have the collection of counter hit launchers, high and mid. Only down forward 124 was a counter hit launcher. And the down jab here, unlike Tekken 8, actually worked. So you could reliably beat her options 
And if she went for the minus 14 on block mid, down forward 1, 2, 1 plus 2, it wasn't a counter hit launcher like it is in Tekken 8. Let's give you another example of the apocalyptical power creep. Nina sidestep 4. Tekken 8 Nina gained a jailing follow-up in sidestep 4. Sidestep 4 2. So, while she still retained the counter hit launching property, the jailing follow-up makes this move a nightmare to deal with. Because if you happen to duck the low and you want to punish the minus 14, you are at the constant threat of the follow-up. And if you keep on ducking to wait for the follow-up, and this follow-up doesn't come, she just made her low safe on block, because you can't punish her anymore. She is not the only one to be gifted with such a power crypt abomination. But this... This is for another time in the foreseeable future. I'll be covering this abomination power crypt murder bot soon enough. The only reason these two are not the most broken abominations in Tekken 8 is because this is somehow allowed to exist. This video is just a small part of a series of videos I'm working on. It will culminate in a very large scale project. A very bold work I'm working on, hoping it can eventually positively contribute to the future of the Tekken franchise. The only reason this large scale project wasn't released yet is because of time constraints and me not having the mental fortitude to finish it yet. As you guys know, I don't have a PS5 or a gaming PC yet. I'm only able to provide Tekken 8's content because very dear friends allow me to do so. And also, working on such a large-scale project in a 2009 laptop to run Sony Vegas doesn't really help, dare I tell you. And the options you could use to stop her movement, of course, will be killed by Monkey F1 plus 2 heat engaging power crush. So, as you can see, it is still her turn indeed, as I previously stated. Now, you got to see with your own eyes. So, what I ask of you guys is a little bit more patience, that you hang on with me, and that if you appreciate the quality of my Tekken content, don't forget to share my Tekken content with your Tekken friends. I'm really trying hard to make a difference in providing in-depth Tekken content and only through your appreciation and support I can actually make a difference. Once again, I thank you guys for all the support you give me. The next video is already in the works and it will follow the same modus operandi, unraveling modern Tekken. And by modern Tekken, I mean the damn curse that started in Tekken 7, not Tekken 8. Tekken 8 being a mere offspring of the same cursed and flawed design philosophy. That being said, we'll be seeing each other again, guys. God bless.